Hello everyone, I'm Gabriel from Peking University. Today, my topic is, are we hungry of 3D LiDAR data for semantic segmentation? I will introduce you our new dataset, Semantic Pose, and some researchers at PKU Pose Lab. It's the outline of this presentation. To answer the question, are we hungry of 3D LiDAR data for semantic segmentation? We will review existing datasets and introduce our newly proposed semantic pose dataset. Furthermore, we will analyze the dataset, make experimental study of data hunger effects, and provide our thinking to the problem. This presentation is based on our previous work. You can refer our papers for more details. First of all, here is a simple illustration of 3D LiDAR semantic segmentation problem. We take point clouds from LiDAR as inputs, and it's aimed to categorize each point into a set of semantic labels. For example, in this picture, we can classify vehicles in blue pedestrian in red, and so on. Today, LiDAR has become the main sensor in robotics, autonomous driving, and mobile mapping. 3D LiDAR semantic segmentation has become a fundamental task for thin understanding. Semantic segmentation has been studied for decades, and in recent years, deep learning methods have made significant progress on this problem. These deep models are mostly data-driven, so they may face data hunger problem. Former studies have found that the performance on several vision tasks will increase with larger training data size. It's same for object detection and semantic segmentation. So it seems we can get better models but by labeling more data. However, for semantic segmentation, point-wise 3D LiDAR annotation is extremely expensive, which leads to limited data size for the usage. Since the point-wise annotations are expensive, for 3D LiDAR semantic segmentation, how many open datasets are available? Here, we list some common datasets for this task. According to the data acquisition method and main application of systems, they can be generally divided into three groups, static datasets, synthetic datasets, and sequential datasets. Static datasets often include only few LiDAR frames as each frame contains very dense point cloud. Static data are usually collected from static viewpoints by terrestrial LiDAR scanners or using MLS systems that capture mainly static scene objects for applications such as street view, 3D modeling, and virtual realities. A major feature of static datasets is dense point clouds. The data are generally static and reconstruct a large-scale street view, but the motion of dynamic objects at the scene is not captured. The generation of real datasets is extremely expensive due to the label intensiveness of data annotation, hence the scales are limited. Synthetic datasets are built through computer simulators as shown in the figures. It can be large scale and have fine but cheap annotations. The problem of using such datasets is caused by the large gap between synthetic and the real scenes. Synthetic scenes can generally be very realistic, but they will lack accuracy in detail. By the way, generating a computer graphic model of a synthetic scene is non trivial. Reuse of the limited graphic models cannot enrich datasets with more diversity. 
Sequential datasets are collected as abundant sequences of frames from vehicle platforms like ADAS, and they are mostly commonly used for autonomous driving tasks such as segmentation of traffic scenes, vehicle pedestrian detection, and tracking. Sequential datasets are exploited to capture the sequences of LiDAR frames with the moving viewpoints on the street. While they usually contain more frames but sparser points than static datasets. Here comes the question Do these datasets meet deep models requirements? First, deep models require large scale data for training. Second, they require diverse data for generalization ability. For the first requirements, it seems so many datasets are available. However, for a specific task, satisfied datasets are limited. For example, if we focus on LiDAR semantic segmentation of autonomous driving, several requirements need to be satisfied. We need datasets for outdoor scenes, and they have to include dynamic information because moving objects are very important for autonomous cars. Finally, the gap to reality makes synthetic datasets unreliable enough for autonomous driving systems. As a result, for a specific task, satisfied datasets are usually limited. So we propose semantic posts as our contribution to this requirement. This is a visualization of semantic post datasets. Shown is abundant dynamics information. The LiDAR frames are accumulated by time. You can see many trajectories of moving objects like person, riders, and vehicles. Semantic post is collected at the campus of Peking University. It includes nearly 3,000 LiDAR frames and 200 million points. And the most typical feature of semantic pulse is a large quantity of dynamic objects. After a brief introduction of semantic pulse, now let's focus on second requirement. Deep models require diverse data for generalization ability. But the question is, how to describe data diversity? How about data diversity of existing datasets? We will give further analysis below. We selected three representative, representative datasets for analysis and comparison. The first is Semantic 3D, which is the largest and one of the most popular static datasets. The second is Semantic Kitty, the largest and one of the most popular sequential datasets. Finally, the new Semantic Pulse dataset, which describes dynamic urban scenes. We will analyze them from aspects of data size and data diversity. A straightforward method for analyzing the data size of 3D LiDAR dataset is to count the point number and proportion of each class. However, for most LiDAR sensors, points have much higher density at near distances. For example, in this scene from Semantic 3D, over 70% points are measured within 15 meters to the scanner, which is a very small area around the LiDAR sensor. From figure C, it seems that this scenario is mostly covered by natural terrain, but actually not. To reflect the actual diversity of the scenario, we voxelize the home data frame uniform spatial resolution before statistical analysis. By counting the number and proportion of valid voxels, we can get more even description of the scenario. So we choose voxelization for fairer description of scene diversity 
other than directly counting the points. It's a common phenomenon for almost all 3D LiDAR datasets. The blue curve is point proportion, and the red one is voxel proportion with, res with respect to the distance. For all three datasets, we get more balanced and smooth curves after voxelization. Obviously, directly looking at the data size, counting points, cannot reflect real scene features. So, we will further emphasize the datasets after voxelization. To describe the data diversity of a scenario or a dataset, we use the histograms of category proportion to describe the environment and object distribution of a scenario. By the way, the proportion is calculated by voxels. Here we give an overview of each dataset. The first line is a representative thing of each dataset. And the second line will present home datasets in descriptors. It's common for all three datasets to be dominated by static categories, ground, vegetation, and buildings. From the view of the whole scenario, small but important dynamic categories like vehicle, person, and rider, they are not obvious so we will analyze them separately below. The first dataset is Semantic 3D. It contains 15 scenes in the training set. The scenes of Semantic 3D are divided into three groups, that is urban, rural, and suburban, according to the geographic location of the data measurement. Regardless of whether the scenes are in the same or different groups, the category proportions of scene objects are very diversified. For example, scene 7 is a railroad scene. It's full of nature terrain with almost no buildings. Scene 35 are the opposite. They are cathedral scenes full of buildings, but almost no vegetation. In general, Semantic 3D describes very diversified scenes. It has rich static categories and dense point clouds. However, it has no moving objects and limits its usage for applications like autonomous driving. Semantic Kitty contains 11 sequences of LiDAR frames in training set, and Semantic Pulse contains 6 sequences. It has similar performance of category distribution with Semantic Kitty and Semantic Pulse. In general, their distribution of static category proportions is not as diverse as that of Semantic 3D. But Semantic Kitty and Semantic Pulse provide instance labels of dynamic objects. Here are dynamic category proportion comparison of these two datasets. The number of dynamic objects is an index to describe the completeness of a scenario. Semantic Pulse describes scenes of abundant dynamic objects and mixed traffic. It has obvious rich diversity of dynamics, especially for pedestrians. We compare it with some popular datasets, not only 3D LiDAR datasets, but also image semantic segmentation datasets like Cityscapes. Semantic posts provide more dynamic diversity than others. The next question is how to compare data diversity between datasets. We use a standardized distance measurement noted as scene diversity distance to evaluate the difference between category histograms of two scenarios. To compare the scene diversity of three datasets quantitatively, we draw cross datasets scene diversity distance D on the matrix. The SI means thin 
or sequence ID in a dataset, and the max matrix value is seen diversity distance. The darker grids means more different of seen diversity, and the lighter grids means the two scenes are more similar. Here, lighter sub matrix indicates that seen inner datasets are re relatively similar and the darker submetrix compares in diversity between datasets. It indicates since inter datasets are relatively diverse. We draw box plots of scene diversity distance for inner dataset analysis. In the figure, each box describes several key statistics. The max value means distance of the most different scenes. The, ma the mean value means distance of the most similar things in the dataset. So, why the range between mean max value means rich in scene diversity? As a result, we can find that Semantic 3D has the richest scene diversity in the dataset, while the other two datasets have weaker performance. Similarly, for dynamic category analysis, we draw another confusion matrix. Obviously, we can find the sub matrix of some posts are darker. For example, from the video, the difference of dynamic objects between some posts and some kitty could be easily observed. For dynamic categories, some posts provide more unique data diversity than others. Due to the lack of some dynamic categories, some 3D have poor dynamic diversity. And in summary of these three datasets, data diversity in the datasets are limited, and there are, there are large gaps in the datasets. After analysis of the datasets, we will give experimental study to the question, data hungry or not? We designed several experiments to answer this question from different aspects, that is, data diversity, data size, instance distance, and quality. We make a survey for existing 3D segmentation method. For example, we selected for experiments, we selected three baselines from three types of deep learning models. That is point based method, point net plus plus, range image based method, screen seg v2, and graph based method, SPG. You can refer our paper for more details about this figure. In experiment 1, cross scene generalization evaluation, we do experiments on semantic 3D subsets, urban scenes, rural scenes, and mixed scenes, including both. This experiment tries to answer the question, how does the diversity influence the model performance? We make cross-validation on this dataset. Due to the time limitation, we will not analyze this table in detail, but give you instinctive understanding by the box plot. Its mean IOU of the models trend on different scenes. The black boxes are models trend on mixed data while the narrow distribution indicates robust performance with more scene diversity, and the hunger of scene diversity leads to unstable results. Similarly, experiment 2 extends the evaluation on cross dataset generalization. It's made on semantic kitty and semantic post dataset. We try to answer the same question on different level. Three models and three sub datasets are used. The phenomenon is similar that robust performance with more sin diversity and hunger of data diversity leads to unstable results. Besides data diversity, dataset size is another important factor affects data hunger problem. Experiment 3 tries to answer the question how does training dataset size? influence the model performance. This figure plots training dataset size versus model performance. 
we can find that increase, increasing training data improves model performance, and different models have different sensitives to dataset size. For example, the uptrend of the of SQL-SEG V2 is more significant than that of .NET++, since it can take range image as input, which are sensitive to the LiDAR's position. Incremental LiDAR frames in a scene captured at different viewpoints may provide more information for range image inputs than point clouds inputs. And in summary, the data hunger problem for dataset size exists for current 3D LiDAR datasets. Dataset data size is not all. Instance distance and data quality also make sense. In 3D light datasets, point clouds become sparser when increasing distance to the sensor. Therefore, the points far away from the sensor are hard to be correctly classified. Let's look at some instance range images with different point number and distance. So could anyone find out what is this? Well, I think nobody can do that. Okay, now we can find their cars, right? For an object, the further far away from the sensor, the fewer number of points it contains, and the higher possibility it will be occluded. It's obviously that too far points will make no significant contribution to model training. We calculate the statistics of the point number distribution of person and vehicle instances in Semnikity and Semnik Post. More than 15% of instances are low quality, which contains fewer than 120 points. And we can see an example of a car with 120 points on the right. Although it is inevitable evitable for 3D LiDAR datasets to contain these instances. A large proportion of open depth datasets and a large proportion of instances are low quality, which leading to inflated datasets. From these experiments, we can get a conclusion. The data hunger problem actually exists for current 3D LiDAR datasets. The data hunger problem is currently a general problem of deep learning systems, where large research efforts have been made for solutions. Generally, they can be divided into two types, improvements of methodology or data annotation. From methodology, researchers attempt to make more use of information from existing data, such as weekly and semi-supervised methods, self-supervised method, transfer learning, and few short learning. From data annotation, researchers attempt to make cheaper point-wise annotation by fully or semi-automatic annotation and synthetic data. Due to time limitation, we will not introduce in detail. We made a survey on lots of studies, and please refer our paper for more details. Finally, we will briefly introduce the future work and our thinking about some open questions. The data hunger problem is increasingly be recognized as a serious and widespread problem for 3D LiDAR semantic segmentation. However, solutions for the data hunger problem in 3D LiDAR have still been a largely unexploded domain compared with studies in computer vision and machine learning. For example, few studies have exploded making use of 3D bounding boxes. In addition, there are many potential directions for us to explore for data hunger problem of 3D LiDAR in the future. Finally, I want to share some related open questions for further thought. 
The first one is how do models handle unknown data in open sets? Since current studies are mostly designed in a closed set, however, practical applications in the real world are an open set problem, and deep models will always be data hunger in unseen categories and new scenarios. Secondly, how to evaluate and dispose dataset bias? Each dataset is a sampling from the real world, and an ideal dataset should be a uniform and dense enough sampling. But it's impossible. Dataset bias is one main factor causing data hunger of diversity. Although there has not yet been a satisfied answer, we expect further studies about this problem. The last one is about semantic gap. While open datasets usually have different category de definition, different semantic hier hierarchy, and a heterogeneous context of one label. How to shrink the semantic gap? Its solution could help us on data hunger problem as well. In summary, data hunger problem is a factual challenge for 3D LiDAR semantic segmentation and hoping our work will be instructive for further studies. Thank you for listening.